Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this evening I have the joy of celebrating my first Chrism Mass as Bishop of Grand Rapids. And as I look out into the church, what I see is a preeminent manifestation of this local church gathered around the bishop celebrating the Eucharist in the cathedral, surrounded by his priests, his deacons, his ministers, with the full and active participation of God's holy people. And indeed, we have parishioners here tonight from every parish of our diocese. And I thank you all for coming. I thank you for your faith and for your Christian service that issues forth from it. I thank our diocesan seminarians who are present tonight and ministering at the altar. And I welcome the men and women religious who have come here and who witness to the beauty of following Christ through the evangelical councils. I certainly want you to know how much I enjoy being your bishop and what a blessing my ministry among you has been in my life. Because of the Chrism Mass's location during Holy Week, it has a very special meaning for priests. Every priest acts in the person of Christ at every Eucharist and in celebrating the other sacraments. So during every Holy Week at the Chrism Mass, we have two important moments. First, we consecrate the chrism and we bless the holy oils that we will use throughout the coming year at all of the baptisms and confirmations, anointings of the sick, priestly ordinations in our local church. And we also will use the chrism to dedicate a new church or a new altar as well. We do this to remind ourselves that all the sacraments and the sacramentals draw their power from the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection. The sacramental oils are physical signs that point us toward a bigger supernatural reality, the sacramental unity of the church. And this unity is sealed, if you will, by the anointing of all believers at baptism and at confirmation. And the anointing of priests in a special way at ordination. The oils also consecrate us to Jesus Christ. We know that the word Christ means the anointed one. And when we call Jesus the Christ, we acknowledge that he is the Messiah, the Chosen One, sealed and consecrated to his Heavenly Father. And whether we share in Christ's priesthood through the priesthood of the baptized or the ministerial priesthood of the ordained, all of us are marked with a similar sign of consecration at our baptism and our confirmation. We pray that all who are anointed with these oils and all the priests who will anoint with these oils may know that the Spirit of the Lord is upon them. May they know that they are anointed and they are sent, whether through baptism or ordination, to bring good news to the poor liberty to captives, new sight to the blind, and to announce a year of favor from the Lord. The second important moment in the Chrism Mass takes place when we who are priests 
renew our commitment to priestly service in the public way. That is something that is special for us. But that is special for the church as well. We will hear our own priests affirm that they are committed to their daily walk with the Lord in prayer and in their dedicated service to their people. The priesthood is a precious gift to the church. Its origins are in the Last Supper of Jesus when he initiated the Eucharist and asked his disciples to do this in memory of him to carry on the celebration of the mystery of his divine presence under the appearances of bread and wine. The ordained priesthood is, of course, at the service of God's holy people, who share in the priesthood of all believers. And the words that come to my mind in describing this kind of service are words which we will hear in the renewal of priestly commitment. They are words that are an old-fashioned expression and not much used or heard anymore these days. But the words are zeal for souls. And yet it fits in so very, very well with the whole thrust of the new evangelization. It strikes me that what Pope Francis said about bishops in his exhortation, The Joy of the Gospel, also applies to priests. He said he will sometimes go before his people, pointing the way and keeping their hope vibrant. At other times, he will simply be in their midst with his unassuming and merciful presence. And yet other times he will have to walk after them, helping those who lag behind, and above all, allowing the flock to strike out on new paths. Let us, as priests of Jesus Christ, carry out our tasks with a renewal of enthusiasm and joy, because people must sense our zeal because it is through that zeal that we become credible witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We priests know that a real help to us in this regard are the prayers that our people offer for us. Those that are gathered here tonight, those that are back in parishes or other ministries within the church. And I know that I speak for our priests when I say that we welcome, gladly welcome, these prayers offered for us each day. Know that I too welcome your prayers for me and am most grateful for them. And so we thank you, the people that we are called to serve, our dedicated deacons, religious sisters and brothers, seminarians, lay faithful, lay ecclesial ministers for your prayers for us and for your close collaboration with us who are the priests of this diocese. And we thank all of our priests for their continued labors of love for the Lord and for us all. I personally thank you, my brother priests, for your warm welcome to me this past year and I also want to recall your prior support of Bishop Hurley and Bishop Rose, who have served our diocese so very, very well. <coughs> Through our words and our deeds, may our people receive that oil of gladness which Jesus, the Anointed One, came to bring us. <coughs> 